Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for dropping by the channel. So for this video, I'm going to be reviewing uh, the latest model from the Canadian micro brand Helios. So the watch I have with me is the blue Helios Fairwind, which is a three hand 39 millimeter dive watch. And it's actually my introduction into handling uh, the Helios brand in person. And I've got to say, Overall, I'm very impressed when you factor in the price point. These guys do retail at 775 US dollars, but they do have a bit of a cult following and they tend to sell out quite quickly. So it's surprising because sometimes you'll actually look on the secondary market and these watches will trend above the original sale price. Another thing I want to mention is that throughout the course of this review, I'm probably going to draw a lot of comparisons between this watch and the Tudor Black Bay 58 because they're very similar in dimensions and vintage dive watch aesthetics. And I've personally owned the Black Bay 58 Black as well as the Navy Blue. And to be honest, in some elements, I do think that the Helios Fairwind outperforms both of those watches when factoring in just the overall quality and also considering that this watch costs about four times less than either of those timepieces. So uh, let's flip the camera around now and you guys can actually check out this watch up close in my studio. Okay guys, so let's take a closer look at the Helios Fairwind here. And I'll quickly mention that this watch is full 316L stainless steel construction for the case, as well as the supplied flat link bracelet here. And as I previously noted, this is a fairly simple three hand movement with no added complications like a date wheel. Although I will mention that uh, this isn't a traditional 60 minute elapsed time diver's bezel because it's more of a dual time bezel that has a one to 12 hour indications and it's bi-directional, so if you actually want to track a different time zone, you can do that quite well. And I'll talk more about this bezel as we get a little further into the review. Now with respect to case dimensions, it's very similar to the Tudor Black Bay 58. As previously noted, you have a 39mm case diameter here. Now if I flip the watch to the side, uh, the lug to lug between my thumbs here is about 48 millimeters. And the overall case height, I measure at about 12.4 millimeters. And that's from the bottom of the screwed down case back to the top of this double domed sapphire crystal. And then some other common dimensions uh, for this watch when you compare it to a Tudor Black Bay 58 is the bracelet. So the lug opening for the bracelet to the head of the watch is an even 20 millimeters. And it does taper down to 16 millimeters before you get to the clasp. And even when you consider something like the dial, this gives me a, a very much of a Tudor Submariner vintage watch vibe, just the way you have those squared off applied markers. Although you can see that they kind of broke up um, the indices because the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock markers are more simple batons, but they're finished extremely well. All of the applied markers have nice polished bevels to them, some brushwork, and they are deeply filled with C3 Swiss Superluminova. And the same can be said for the hand stack. I was very surprised when you're looking at this watch up close at the intense longitudinal brushing that's done on the hands. And they're simple uh, sword style hands for the hour and the minute hand. And you get that nice pop of orange color on the uh, arrow tip seconds hand there, which reaches out to the very periphery of the dial and you can actually see that there's a nice uh, 60 minute running track at the very edge of the dial as well. Now the overall text on the dial is quite minimal and I think it helps keep the overall symmetry of the watch. It just says Helios with its symbol below the 12 o'clock baton marker. And then above the six o'clock, it does say 20 atmospheres, which is your 200 meter water resistant designation as well as fair wind below that. Now the Tudor Black Bay line probably has some of the best bezel action out of any uh, luxury diver that's sub $5,000 in my opinion. And the Helios Fairwind isn't far behind it with respect to bezel action. 
So similar to the Black Bay 58, it's a 60 click bezel, but it is bi-directional. But the individual detents are extremely crisp and um, very tactile as well. The alignment for this is extremely good too. Where I do think that this bezel actually outperforms Tudor to a certain extent is just the way that the mid case is braked up. It's really easy to uh, grab this coin edge side of the bezel here. And also there's a sapphire cap on the top of the bezel. So unlike an aluminum insert, it won't scratch as easily. And lastly, the loom on the bezel is a little bit better. This triangle is intensely loomed up as well as all of the other hour markers. So I'm actually gonna throw up a low light shot now, just so you can see how good the loom is on this watch. I was quite impressed at the uh, level of treatment for the C3 Swiss Superluminova, which is evenly applied to all of the hour markers, the hands, and the entirety of the bezel. The only slight letdown for me with respect to the legibility of this watch is the anti-reflective treatment on the underside of this crystal. I do find that you do get a fair bit of reflections um, if you're looking at this watch directly in sunlight or in studio lighting. So that's one minor area of improvement that I wish that Helios can address for future models. And the only other minor gripe I have about this watch is just how thin and sharp the lugs actually are. You can actually see if you um, pull down the bracelet here that the lugs actually do extend a little bit past where you have this female end link here. Now I love the articulation of the bracelet, don't get me wrong, but uh, these lugs are very angular, well-defined, and a bit sharp at the very edges here. But by contrast, I do think Tudor should pay attention to uh, the overall case finishing, the contoured lines on the case, as well as how they manufacture the bracelet on the Fairwind here. You get very fine details like this micro bevel here that's polished before you get to the tops of the lugs, which are brushed to a very, very fine detail. This crown is also nicely engraved with the Helios logo here. It's a nice conical crown that's gnarled extremely well. Of course, it's screwed down for the water resistance, but if you unthread it, you can manually wind the Swiss Solita SW200 here in the first position. Now this SW200 is a workhorse Swiss movement with 26 joules, about a 40 hour power reserve, and beats away at about four hertz. A notable feature is that Helios actually uh, solicited Salida to give them a no date spec version of this movement. So normally there'd be a ghost uh, date wheel position here, but you can actually just pull the crown all the way out and there's no intermediate position here which is very high attention to detail, and I wish more micro brands did this when making a no-date watch. And then of course we gotta talk about this bracelet, which is a beautiful flat link bracelet. Again, very fine details with the micro beveling along the sides there. And uh, just the way that this overall bracelet is brushed and the way it articulates just plays with the light. The light just seems to dance off of each individual link which wasn't the case I found on the uh, Tudor Black Bay 58. I did find that the few links um, heading towards the clasp and the clasp itself was extremely uncomfortable. Whereas if you get to the clasp on this guy here, you get a very nice finishing. You get the Helios medallion here in the middle. Twin trigger release, which is nice as opposed to just like a flip lock here. You get a very strong milled section of the swing arm here. And then the ace in the sleeve for this bracelet is just this, um, this medallion actually acts as a push button where you can independently and without tools adjust the overall length of the, uh, the bracelet here. And again, that's all regulated through the Helios medallion symbol at the top. And uh, here's a quick wrist shot of how the Helios Fairwind sits on my 19 centimeter circumference wrist. So that's seven and a half inches if you're going imperial. And you can see even though it's more of a mid-sized diver, I still think you get some strong wrist presence because the length of the lugs and the light play on this bracelet are very noticeable. Now I weighed this watch and sized up for my wrist. It comes in at a very comfortable 135 grams on the bracelet. So again, 
You do get some wrist presence here, but it's very comfortable and you can wear this all day without any hot spots or any irritation on the wrist. Now I suspect in the comments some people are going to be chiming in and claiming that Tudor is a way better watch considering you get um, the in-house Tudor manufactured chronometer movement with a 72 hour power reserve when you get things like the five year Tudor warranty. And all those things are true, but for me uh, this watch is actually running in very tight tolerances within COSC. I've only seen this watch picking up about three seconds per day. And even though the power reserve is only 40 hours, when it comes to these uh, simple three-handers, it's not that difficult just to reset the time if the power reserve does wind down. So having 72 hour power reserve would be welcome, but for me, it doesn't really justify a price increase of like $3,000. And I'll also mention that uh, Helios does pride itself on customer service. So if you have any questions or concerns about your watch, you can easily contact them and they will get back to you promptly about any issues. But I haven't heard too many people complain about uh, the quality or getting these watches serviced in the near future. But guys, as always, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.